Hello and good day to everyone. So welcome to the new chapter of seismic data processing and imaging. It's called seismic migration. So in this video lecture, we have a learning outcome. So the first learning outcome for this lecture would be to establish the understanding of migration. So we have to know what is migration and why we need to apply during the seismic data processing. And the second uh, learning outcome of this lecture is to develop the visual capabilities of knowing the subsurface structure without migration. So let's understand what is seismic migration and what are the objectives or the main goal of the seismic migration. So let's start with, with what is seismic migration? So the seismic migration is actually a process of reconstructing a seismic section so that the reflected even reflected events which is coming from the dipping reflectors or the complex structure such as anticline, syncline. So that events are repositioned under their correct surface location. So in this case, I'm going to present some of the example such as dipping reflector and decline and sink line to show you why we need the seismic migration and the final seismic section does not represent the true geometry of the reflectors so thus the migration is applied to the final stack or either the pre-stack data to get the three main objective so the first objective or aim of seismic migration is to move dipping reflector to their correct position or the true position. So normally when we record the seismic data, when we have the subsurface geometry is complex, such as we have a lot of dipping reflectors. So in that case, we will not get the true position of the dipping reflectors in time data so that's why we have to apply the migration either time migration or the depth migration that one we are going to discuss and the second objective or the aim of migration is to collapse the diffraction pattern so during this migration we actually eliminate the signal interference interference caused by the point diffractors which i'm also going to discuss in detail and the third uh, objective of the migration is to improve the resolution and also focus the energy so the image of the subsurface can be normally be achieved by using the relatively precise velocity information obtained from velocity analysis cmp cdp gathers that one we have discussed in the previous chapters about the velocity analysis so these are actually three main objective of seismic migration so here actually uh, why we need to apply the migration so in this case let's say we have the horizontal reflection reflector uh, in the subsurface then we have the shot here and the receiver here so in the horizontal reflectors our cmp is exactly below the CDP or oh, CDP is actually below the CMP. So, but in dipping reflector, so obviously when this uh, waves goes here and it's reflect back to here, so your CMP and CDPs are not in line. So what reflect in the seismic recorded data, actually it's reflect in this direction. So it's going like this one. So we will assume this point is coming from this place, but actually this is not happening. So that's why we need to apply the seismic migration. So let's say, uh, let's understand this uh, concept why I am saying that dipping reflector has a problem or has not, uh, has not uh, captured or the recorded in our recording system. So let's say we have the one actual reflector, uh, which is a dipping reflector. And then we have the surface over here. So what we do, we have the three shot and receiver point on the surface. So we record the data. So when we send the seismic wave, so wave actually goes in all direction. It's going like a 
like a wave front so all the waves will go in this so first it will reflect from this point and second one will be recording from here and the third one will be recording from this point but actually when we have the recorded data at the surface because we don't know the subsurface geometry uh, we are blind so it will we will have just the recorded time so what will it record because the time which is coming from here to here it will be plotted like this one for this case we will be having the time like this one and for third case is like this one so when we uh, correlate this point so we will get this uh, reflectors like this one so the blue color of the reflector or the line shows the recorded data and the red one is actual so now uh, if we look at the wave front wave front is actually passing through these two points so we know either this reflector reflection is coming from this point this point this point or either this point but for that we must need the velocity information of the medium so that we can plot our recorded time according to the true position so for that case we also can find the angle so which is the real uh, alpha t and alpha s is the striking so from this expression we can get the angle of this data so that's why we need the seismic migration to move this dipping reflector from the recorded position to the true position so the second case i'm taking here is the anticline so let's say in subsurface you have real anticline structure so then you plot a geometry on the surface recording system so let's say you have one source and receiver or just i'm talking about receiver because we already have the recorded data so the recording recorded trace is actually coming from this point but we don't know so what we will do we will plot or it will be recorded here like this one because the length of this red line is similar to length of this uh, blue line so for the second receivers we also have the same case so the rec the recording is coming from here the uh, actually signal but will will be recorded like this one same for the other cases so if you look at all the source and receiver it will be coming like this one and for the last one you see this one and this one probably equal because the antique line is symmetrical so uh, once we plot or we interpret this uh, antique line it will be appears like this one so this is the recorded antique line and this is the real antique line so what happened in the antique line case so the antique line structure will appear larger and with the wider flanks in the seismic recorded data so you see the flank is is smaller in the real anticline but the flanks are wider in the recorded data so that's why for to bring this position to in to, to the real position we need the seismic migration so the another case is actually the uh, anti uh, sync line yeah this was the anticline and this now we are moving to the sync line so let's say we have the sync line which is um, highlighted with the red line so this is your sync line and we have all the acquisition geometry or we can name the receiver so to understand better which trace is coming from which point because this is a quite complex uh, uh, geometry so for for this case we have the a which is actually the first receiver so it is actually coming from here but we don't know the time we don't know from where it is coming so if you plot the uh, wave front it's actually passing through through these two points so we will put it at the exactly below the receivers it's like this so for second one c uh, is coming from here but we will plot it here so same case for all these traces so that's why uh, what we do we recorded the sync, sync line sync line in a bow tie shape which is actually the blue line so you can see this is bow tie it's actually the output of uh, sync line so I, I will show you one animation to understand how this bow tie is actually up, appearing so in this you can see in the subsurface we have a sync line and the wave is propagating from here so once the wave hit to this point so actually these are converting and when it's recording at the surface so it's actually recording the bow tie so like this one so this is a similar case in this one 
but this is a wider sync line and this is a smaller sync line to just uh, give you an idea so again you can see here so these edge is actually producing the bow ties and obviously this one is again coming from this direction so now when we record the seismic data so it was actually our earth model which was input then we have the unmigrated seismic data so which is actually recorded and unmigrated but it's processed but now once we process and migrate our data so it will looks like this one because this is um, a very uh, short survey that's why you cannot see the uh, reflector here we are just focusing on the sink line edges and the this part of sink line so you can see a better sink line is image in this data so uh, just to give you an example from the real case so this this is actually unmigrated lines which is a 2d line is showing the north and south direction and you can see there's there is some bow ties so which is the red one is your bow tie and once you migrate this bow tie so you can see a small sink line is here appears and the larger sink line is appearing here so uh, that was all about the understanding the seismic migration why we need it and what are the actually main objective of the seismic migration uh, we will continue with the next topics in the next lecture. Thank you so much and have a good day.